Can you imagine your life where money is your friend, working with you to achieve all your dreams and desires? If you struggle seeing money as your friend, then join Kathy Cook Noble, financial advisor and educator on understanding how your money can work for you. It is possible. Now, here is Financially Speaking with Kathy Cook Noble. Good afternoon and welcome to Financially Speaking. I am your host, Kathy Cook Noble, and I have my co-host with me today, which is Ashley Quinn Hogan. And you guys probably recognize Ashley from being the youth financial expert. And she comes to us every every quarter and sometimes a little bit more when I can talk her into more shows. And uh, she shares a lot of the youth wisdom and uh a lot of the experiences that people go through when they're in their, you know, younger ages, when they're finishing school, starting careers, just finishing, you know, uh, or starting a master's and PhD program and really having to learn about money. I, I think it's, it's always so great. I love listening to Ashley because it reminds me how much there is to learn when you're at that age. And it's, it's easy for someone in my age bracket to say, oh yeah, I remember that. Um, and hindsight's always 2020. But when we're working together, uh, Ashley gives a great perspective so that for those of you out there who are in that 20 to 30 age range and you're getting started and you're trying to get control of your finances, she's able to help give you the guidance now rather than wait until you're, you know, 40 or 50 and you're saying, geez, wish I had known that then. And uh, I think it sometimes helps when it's a person of peers that's sharing the experiences than someone who's like, yep, told you so. (laughs) I've been there, done that. So it's, uh, it's always such a great pleasure for me to work with Ashley because she is one of my favorite people. Um, and what we do here on Financially Speaking every week is we talk about financial matters. And, and hopefully our, our plan is always to break it down in a nice, easy, plain language, conversational kind of way so that you can understand your own stuff. Because I've always, my whole life, before I even got into life as a financial advisor and bookkeeper and finance business strategist, all that stuff, Um, I always thought you could do it yourself. I always believed you could. I always did it myself uh, as much as I could that you could do without a license. Um, And I, and I did as much as I could for my family because I thought really as fascinating as it is to hear about the Carl icons and Elon Musk's of the world. um, And uh, just see that, you know, people that Sarah Blakely that sells Spanx for, you know, I don't know, billion dollars or whatever it was she sold part of it for. You think that's pretty cool, you know, and it's so really far removed from everyday life because everyday life is all about, you know, am I paying too much in bank fees? Um, Do I know what my mortgage is? Do I know how to buy a car? Do I know whether I should lease or buy finance a car and all these things, which we'll talk about tonight. And tonight we'll also talk about credit scores and and uh, all kinds of things that we come across every day. And I find that's what the actual purpose of our network is at the Inspired Choices Network is to help every day, everyday purpose for everyone in the different areas of their life that they need. So I encourage people to plug in to the other shows as well, because if you need help with relationships, with uh, parenting, with training your pets, um, with getting your energy back, with um, Uh, mental preparedness or mindset then there's we have a show for each of those things and it really does help contribute to an overall happy life and uh, just general happiness so uh, and that all ties into money because if you're not happy in one area of your life or uh, you're having struggles with one area of your life it can affect all the other areas and that's what the network's for is to be there for the time that you need it at the the most and don't forget to download the app it is available for free So there's no excuses. This is a financial show and I'm telling you it's free, like no dollars so you can do it. You can afford it. Um, Download it. If it's Apple, Android, whatever it is, you can listen live. You can listen on demand. You can join us in the chat room. Um, And if you want to check it out after because you don't want to see the live show, then you can listen to the many podcasts that we have out there where it's it's in replay after the show. So download the app, it's super easy to use. And I mean, free couldn't be an easier word when we're talking finances. So uh, there is that plug for the app. So we all have it here. I think it's really cool and I think you'll enjoy it too. So please download it and and, uh, let us know how you do. So Ashley, how are things going with you? Things are good, Um, you know, time is, is ticking on. Um, you know, just had some, some big things happen recently. So I'm, you know, I was just saying before the show, I'm, I'm happy that 
Um, this week's been a little bit of a slower week, but that's, you know, that's what I like. I like a nice, a nice little break, calm after the storm. Exactly. And, and you've also got some, let's see, this is the first part of November. So uh, exams getting close. Are we into exams or are we past exams? So I'm fortunate that I only have one exam. Um, right. So I, when that's going to be, um, it's, it's a surprise. Uh, we don't know yet. Sometime between December 8th and, and 19th, I think it's, it's like an early Christmas gift. Um, but yeah, right now it's just assignments, but yeah. So November sort of kickstarted like the craziness that's about to, it's about to happen. So I said that this week's pretty calm, but that's, um, either there's something I'm forgetting or um, they're letting us have a nice little break before, you know, sort of the, the storm starts. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, and you're enjoying school because this is, for those of you just joining in, Ashley is in a new program at a new school in a new city and it's uh, not easier. <laughs> She's ramped it up a little bit. <laughs> So just maybe share a little bit for those that are just joining us for the first time, because uh, they're going to love to hear the cool things you're doing. Yeah, so um, I just started my Master's of Arts program at Ontario Tech here in um, Oshawa. Um, and so I'm, I'm in a two-year program in my first year um, of criminology. Um, and I was forewarned going into a master's program that you know, I, I, I better be prepared for what I've gotten myself into. Um, and I, I didn't, I just thought that people were trying to, you know, scare me and all that. And that's not what I'm trying, I'm not trying to scare anyone, but um, it's a lot, it's a lot of work um, and it's really intense, um, but I've really been enjoying it. And I'm so grateful that Western, which is my undergraduate school, um, they prepare me so well for it. Um, where I'm not having nearly as many struggles as some students are having that are coming from schools that I'm not going to, I won't, I won't name, <laughs> I won't give them the bad publicity, but um, I'm so grateful, you know, for Western um, because I think it prepared me really, really well for what I'm going through right now. Um, and it's allowed me to really enjoy what I'm learning and the courses I'm taking and the, the material that um, I'm having to deal with. And, and a master's is, is a lot different than an undergrad for those that haven't taken a master's degree. It's a lot more, and, and you correct me if I'm wrong, because this was a long time ago, but it's a lot more of uh, uh, interactive with other people and conversation. And I'm going to say more academic thinking or critical thinking that um, it's not so much memorize this and write an exam. It's, uh, it's more of... Uh, what do you think and how do you think that and start to really I, I find that it's just one of those things that really expands your mind and kind of hurts it sometimes but <laughs> uh is that sound about the same as it is now yeah that's about right um it's a big jump and that's what I didn't prepare myself for um I thought you know university is university is university but no, um, you go from your undergraduate courses, which um, I mean, they do get smaller throughout the years, but um, you know, you start off with like 600 kids in a class and then get on to 300 and then eventually you're at like 30 or, you know, if, you know, 50 maybe. Um, and then fast forward to your master's, like we have a cohort, um, I think there's 12 of us. So yeah. we all have the same classes. Um, and yeah, that's basically what is it? It's like a seminar for every class. You just sit and you chat. Um, and you're kind of put on the spot, like you better show up to class prepare and you better know your stuff or you're going to get called on and you're going to, you know, maybe look like a little bit of a fool if you don't know, right? Yep, yep, fun times. <laughs> and through, through all this, they're not talking to you about credit scores, I know, because that's not the program. And I don't actually think they ever talk about credit scores in school. So we're going to do it. This is the school for credit scores tonight. We're going to teach everybody why it matters because we're going to talk about credit scores we're going to talk about what they even are um we're going to talk about why it should matter when you should start caring about it and we're going to even maybe get you to share a little bit of a story about what you ran into recently um but you run into credit scores all the time so i can tell you i deal with people that are remortgaging their house because mortgages and house uh purchases are 
you know, just crazy right now with all the real estate market. People are either refinancing because of the rates being so low or they're selling their house and downgrading, uh, having a hard time downgrading because if you sell in this market, you buy in this market. But uh, when you do have a mortgage, they want to know what your credit score is. So in Canada, it's your beacon score. And in the U.S., it's called your FICO score. So you've probably heard on shows like Susie Orman, she talks about your FICO score. Um, in Canada, it's your beacon score. It's the same thing. It's the numerical value that they assign to you with your credit. So everyone has a credit rating out there. Uh, and it's, it's funny. I, I'll give a really quick example. I ran into a situation once. So we have pay cash all the time. Don't take on any debt. And this person was like, I should have an excellent credit score because I never borrow any money. I pay for everything up front. Uh, I've never financed anything. I'm like, you will have a terrible credit score because you have no credit. <laughs> and that's exactly what it came out to be. They're like, I don't understand how I could get denied uh, what they're applying for because they're like, I don't understand. I always pay for cash. I'm like, that's your problem. It's a credit score. You want, you're asking for credit. You have no credit. <laughs> So uh, that's one thing people need to know is when you think you're doing this great streak of business because you're not borrowing any money and borrowing money can be something as simple as you have a credit card and you purchase groceries on it and then you paid it off. You're going to get a credit score because you're borrowing money for that temporary 20 days or 10 days or whatever the case is. Then you pay it back. So the credit card company is going to say, hey, you're a good guy or girl. You paid your money on time and didn't incur any interest and we're going to give you, you know, a good score. So you're going to get a great recommendation from us saying you're a good risk. That's really what it's about. Um, so with credit, it's, it's something that can either really mess you up because it's easy to get sometimes and you get yourself into this vicious cycle of, Oh, I, you know, pay buy now, pay later and use my credit cards and, and you're not preparing for the end, which is paying it back. That's where it can cause you some grief, uh, but it can also cause you some great, wonderful things where you can buy a house and a car and all these other things because you've got good credit, you're financially responsible, and lenders are saying, hey, you're a great risk. I'd love to have you as a credit risk for me because I feel confident you're going to pay me back. Um, in my very long, long time ago life, uh, I spent many, many years, uh, over 20 years in the car automotive industry as a dealer. And I was the finance person for the car leasing and dealt with credit every single day. And I can assure you that very few people knew their credit score or knew what it meant or knew why it mattered, but it made a big difference on what their interest rates were. And that's another reason why your card, your credit score matters, not just because you might want to get a loan, but you want to get a loan with a better rate. So those are some things that I've come across personally and I see them every day, really, everyone uh, in their financial world, uh, looking at their credit score and stuff. Um, now, Ashley, in your case, because you're in a different age bracket by just you know a few years, uh, are your friends in, uh, have you guys ever had those conversations about, because you're just getting into that, you know, buying a car, maybe buying a house, potentially that you're in a special category because a lot of people don't go on and do their masters and PhDs, but for your friends that graduated from their undergrad, they might be already in that, um, hey, let's get a house and a car and so forth. So do they ever talk about credit and credit scores? Yeah, I think, so I think that I might be um, maybe one of the exceptions to the rule because I started worrying about it a little bit earlier than anybody else did. Um, but I still had that, you know, I think I was like 16 or 17 when I first um, realized that, you know, oh man, I better, you know, check into this and uh, make sure that I have a credit score that's going to get me where um, I need to be when, you know, I'm 25, 30, whatever, whenever the time comes that I'm going to be looking at making large investments or that I'm going to need a good credit score to back up some of my decisions. But right now, yeah, I'm in, I'm in that sort of age category where people are starting to want to buy cars and to buy houses and, um, I think that a lot of them um, are finding that they either, you know, don't have a great credit score because they haven't, um, they don't, they don't know what it, they don't know what it means, and and they've allowed it to sort of fluctuate with um, with that lack of knowledge, 
or um, like you mentioned in your example, it's someone who's never really, you know, used credit. So they think they should have a great score um, when in fact, you know, no score means, you know, a poor score, right? Um, so I think that that's the main thing that's kind of been um, happening with a lot of people that I know in my age cohort anyway. Um, but as, as far as I'm concerned, I think that, you know, as, with anything, the earlier you look into it, the better, um, because you're going to set yourself up for success, you know, in, in the years to come. Absolutely. And look, I think we're up to a first break, Ashley. I think we are. So yeah, we'll leave that thought there for now. We will come back to it um, after a brief break. Um, but for now, you're listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. Um, I'm Ashley. I'm here with Kathy Cook Noble. Um, and we'll be right back to chat about credit scores a little bit more after the break. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Alrighty, welcome back everyone. Um, before we went into the break, we were just chatting a little bit about the importance of credit scores um, and sort of, you know, where certain age groups fall with respect to uh, knowledge about credit and credit ratings. Um, and I was just sharing that um, some people in my life that are that are my age, um, which for those of you who don't know is, is in the 20s, the young 20s, um, you know, we're sort of running into this problem where we don't have a credit history because we didn't um, think about it, nor we're starting to think about it now, but, you know, now's the time when we start, we sort of want to start buying cars and, and houses and uh, making these larger purchases um, where you need a credit score. Um, and so, you know, this idea of starting early um, is a good one. And I'll, I'll throw in a, a quick example. The first time I thought about credit scores was, I think I was 16 or 17 years old. Um, and at the time, um, I had a cell phone plan, which I had no idea, you know, was even related to credit history or credit score, or anything like that, um, that was part of a family plan. And as at the age where I sort of wanted to start paying it on my own, I, you know, I had my own job. Um, but I was sort of not old enough that I had a credit card or um, any sort of credit history like that. And like Kathy mentioned earlier, I thought, well, I don't have any credit score, so it's got to be good. Um, and I went to, you know, purchase my first cell phone and um, they were asking for a credit history report. I was like, well, I don't have a credit card. And it made you know, the whole process a lot more difficult. Um, and that's just something as, I mean, phones are expensive, but it's something as simple as a phone. Um, sort of, you know, you can imagine how stressful and difficult that is for people 
um, you know, in their 20s that are trying to make bigger purchases like cars and, and houses where that credit score is, you know, exponentially more important. And so sort of this uh, discussion about knowing your credit and becoming obsessed with it, um, you know, I think is, uh, is an important part of, uh, you know, sort of becoming an adult and uh, becoming financially responsible. Yeah, that's actually a great example because the cell phones are one of the biggest contributors to people's decline in their credit scores. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that they, these companies report. And just for those of you out there that don't understand the process, uh, some companies do what's called reporting on your credit score. And in Canada, as well as the U.S., there's two big companies that really handle your credit score. One's TransUnion and the other one's Equifax. And there's, there's no regulation really around credit scores and reporting. So the two companies, I've never seen them have the same credit score for the same person. So some people, and the reason for that is some people, uh, some credit card companies, some cell phone companies, some car dealers, they report to one, one company over the other. So say you go in and you get a cell phone and they report to TransUnion, uh, they might also report to the Equifax, but maybe it's not regularly, or maybe they report differently. It changes your beacon score, your FICO score. Um, so a lot of people don't realize that when they report, they're reporting and they're saying, you're, you're good, you're not good, you're kind of okay. <laughs> and they do these ratings like an R1, 2, R3, R4. And if you're an R9, that means you're chronically bad, late all the time, and it pulls your score down. Uh, if you're an R1, that means you're a rock star and you get paid on time and no problem. Uh, a lot of people don't know how to read those scores and those those ratings. Uh, but the cell phone, you're right, that, that's a big one. That comes up a lot. Yeah, and especially like today, right? Like everybody has a cell phone and people are getting them younger. Um, and, you know, the time's going to come when um, you're in that situation that I was in where I wanted to, you know, to take over that bill from a family account or, you know, you want to make a bigger purchase. And it's super important that, um, first of all, you know that you have a credit score. Second of all, that you know what that credit score is um, and you know what influences that credit score, um, which I'm sure we'll talk about um, a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, why not? Let's talk about it now. We've got, <laughs> um, so a lot of the things that uh, go into your credit score. So for, for those of you out there in Canada, your credit score is a number between 300 and 900. So if you have perfect credit, you're going to have a score of 900. If you just make the cut to start to have credit and it's not great credit, it's 300. So you want, um, and I'll tell you the average mark that when you're looking just because I've dealt with so many people in mortgages lately a lot of the mortgage lenders are looking somewhere around that 650 mark to and that's not spectacular that doesn't mean things are perfect that just means that's really what we're looking for to get you a decent rate and that's what I've seen in the last year for lenders um, now does that mean you're going to get the best rate no not necessarily um, because you could, with all the people coming in, it's just like school, like Ashley, when you're applying to school, if you've got a hundred people applying for 10 positions, it makes it harder than if you have 50 people applying for 10 positions in the school. So if we have all these people applying for credit, well, if you have a 650 and someone else has a 750, they might prefer to work with them because their score is higher, which means they're less of a risk. Uh, now, what makes up your credit score? Five things make up your credit score. There's the payment history, that's 35% of your, your beacon number. Uh, debt utilization ratio is 30%. Credit history makes up 15%. The credit application frequency makes up 10%, which we really want to talk about because this is the one people forget about or ignore or don't know about. And credit diversity is 10%. So if we talk about just those five different things and what they are, then I think it will help for people to understand, like, for example, your payment history, like Ashley was saying, uh, you know, paying your cell phone on time, uh, paying your credit card or your loan, whatever it is on time or late or um, not at all. <laughs> Those get you a little, uh, lower score. Um, so that's your payment history. Like, have you missed payments? Are you making them on time? Are you paying the minimum? Whatever the case. 
Uh, how much do you currently owe? So that's your debt utilization. So 30% of your beacon score is like, oh, okay, I have five credit cards. And this is why on a little side note, when we're doing some, some debt counseling, um, if you have five credit cards, for example, and each credit card has $5,000 as a limit, you have $25,000 of potential access to money. If your debt utilization is, I have one credit card with uh, $3,000 on it, and I cancel my other four, now your debt utilization just went up because now you have 3,000 out of 5,000 as a debt utilization versus 3,000 out of 25,000 as a debt utilization. So the percentage goes down, ironically enough, the more you have on debt utilization. So that is one of those things that you wanna keep in mind when you're thinking about, okay, I got myself into a pickle, which is not uncommon. Uh, I think it's about $30,000 that the average Canadian is carrying right now in credit card debt. But, uh, you know, I got myself in trouble. I overspent, got a little crazy. Um, now what do I do? Well, okay, I paid this credit card off. Doom, I'm going to cancel it. I paid this one off. Boom, I'm going to cancel it. Don't cancel it right away. That hurts your credit score, believe it or not, by doing something good and paying it off. That's debt utilization. Your credit history is um, how long has it been since you've had credit? So, uh, well, I had a cell phone when I was 16 and I paid it and I got rid of it and I'm, I'm 40 and I haven't had credit since I was 18. Not good history. Um, how long have you had each of your accounts? Well, I've had my cell phone since I was 16. Now I'm 40 and, and I'm not 40, but that would be cool. Um, and then you've had all these years of having credit reporting just from your cell phone company. Well, that's good. That helps, especially if it's a good reporting. Um, and do you actively use credit right now? So if you have a credit card, for example, do you use it? So I know lots of people that are like, well, I don't want to use it because I want to pay cash. Use the credit card and pay off the credit card because that gives you a credit rating and do it every month because that gives you credit history. So that's kind of cool. Um, application frequency. This is one of the things that a lot of people don't know about how often you get your credit pulled can bring your score down. So if you're going to every creditor out there and trying to get a credit card or uh, buy now, pay later furniture, and you're, you're going around and you're getting all this credit, they're pulling all your credit, that lowers your score because more people are pulling your credit. And what kind of credit have you used is the final piece the, of the puzzle. So do you uh, have high levels of revolving credit? So are you maxed out every month on your credit card and you pay the minimum and it comes down a little bit and then you max it out again. And is that how it's revolving? Um, do you use unsecured loans or those payday loans? And by the way, the financial advisor in me is telling you don't do that. That is just not good. You can't get ahead of it. The interest rates are too high. Um, it's, you know, if you're using a loan shark, it's kind of, you can't get ahead of it. It's really hard. And these payday loans are really tough because people get caught up in this whole circle of, uh, borrowing to pay it, borrowing to pay it, you just can't get ahead of it. So um, that is a challenge. And if you have debt consolidation services, so say you did go a little wild and you overspent, you can't get control of your spending and you go and you consolidate your debt, that will bring your score down because that's um, the kind of credit that you're using. Obviously bankruptcy will have a, a big hit to your credit score. Um, but these are all things that I don't think a lot of people really realize with their credit. And Ashley, you know better than I do um, out there talking to a lot of people your age, if this is stuff that they're even putting on their radar right now. Yeah, um, like definitely there's a few of those things that um, I at least hope a lot of us know, but there's a few things, you know, a few of those five that um, I think people don't realize. And, you know, one of them is uh, debt utilization, um, you know, and, and the amount of um, you know, credit that you use that you have access to. Um, and I don't think people realize that that's, that that's a big one. Um, but also, you know, my thing is, um, you know, every month when you get that credit card bill, so like you have a credit card, that's, it's a great thing to have because that helps you build credit, obviously. Um, but the, that minimum payment that's on there is, you know, is a scary thing for me because I'm like, you know, when I see that number, I'm like, that's a ridiculous amount, um, a ridiculously small amount to be paying. Um, you know, my motto is always if, you know, if you don't have the money to pay for it, you shouldn't be buying it. 
Um, so one of the things that I do, um, sort of a personal example is um, I use my credit card um, to pretty much pay for anything. Um, and then at the end of the month, all of it gets paid. You know, it's not a minimum payment. It's not half of it. It's not 99. It's 100 percent of it gets paid at the end of the month. Um, you know, that way you're, you know, you're not going to hurt your credit score. You're going to build your credit score. Um, you know, you're building credit. You're using that credit card. Um, and, you know, you're ensuring that your score stays at a healthy number and that you're contributing to it. Um, but you need to make sure that, you know, no matter what your credit card limit, the banks are always going to try to increase it. They'll offer you an extra $2,500, uh, an extra, you know, 3000 whatever it is. Sure, that's fine. You can accept it. But just know that that's not actually a handout saying, hey, here's $5,000. It's if you have that to spend at the end of the month when you know it's coming, by all means. But um, what I think people get into trouble is when um, they see that they can have they can have, quote unquote, um, five thousand dollars now. And then at the end of the month, they can pay um, ten dollars. And that's considered acceptable, um, which they don't pay attention to the interest that's, interest that's accumulating on that, um, you know, throughout the next month or the next two months or the next three months. Um, and I think that that's where people get into trouble. Um, and that's where we get into this um, borrowing to pay, um, especially when you have more than one credit card. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, you and I have talked about compound interest before and how interest money makes money when it's invested. You can your interest is reinvested, your dividends are reinvested and you get interest on that. It's exactly the same on credit cards. So you get and, and their interest rates are fantastic where you're paying 20 percent. Like there is no way in a investment world that you can get a, a low risk investment that's going to pay you to twenty thousand dollars or twenty percent on a thousand dollars if that's what your credit card is or whatever the case so you get a lot of people who have these twenty percent cards and the the creditor is making fantastic returns that are mind-blowing and i'm i mean from a financial side you're like that is amazing <laughs> that from a creditor that making that kind of money but you're compounding that interest and when you say about the credit card i always laugh when it you know, at the very bottom where it says, um, if you pay the minimum, it will take you 115 years or whatever that crazy number is to pay it off. And, and even the, if you had a couple hundred bucks, the, if you pay the minimum, it will take you 27 years to pay this off. And I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> and I don't know if people notice that because it's not big writing, but uh, you're totally right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, right. It's not in big writing because, you know, they want you to to pay the minimum payment and, and they can make the interest off you. Um, but it's, it's being diligent and making sure that, um, you know, you going into um, your financial life and, and going into credit and making sure that you know what you're dealing with. And if you don't know, that's, that's absolutely fine. Like if no one, it's not something we talk about in school. So it's not something that young adults are equipped to, to handle right away. But um, you know, if you, if you don't know, then, you know, you got to give yourself the resources um, to know so that you can um, get into a better financial situation. Um, yeah. But, it, you know, it, we're going to head off into a break here. Um, we'll come back and chat about, um, you know, sort of those five components a little bit more. Um, but for now, you're listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspire Choices Network. I'm Ashley Quinn Hogan, joined by Kathy Cook Noble here. Uh, when we come back, we'll chat a little bit more about credit reports and credit history. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Money is complicated, right? Actually, no. 
It's not. You don't have to be a trader on Wall Street to get a handle on your money. TV shows often instill fear to keep you believing you can't understand it or do anything yourself. If dealing with your finances brings up a lot of other F words, then you need to read All Ladies Should Use the F Word, A Guide to Loving Your Finances by Kathy Cook Noble. Kathy helps you take control of your finances and leave the other F word, fear, in the dust. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator, Kathy Cook-Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspireChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at BookKeepPlus.ca. Now back to the program. All righty. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining us again tonight. Um, tonight we've been talking about credit scores, um, and we do have a question here in the chat room um, just to share with everyone um, and to maybe, you know, discuss a little bit about, because I think it's a good one. Um, so, you know, just to give a little bit of context before we went to, to break, um, I was talking a little bit about the importance of, um, you know, when you have a credit card, making sure that you're paying it off in full every single month, as opposed to paying that little minimum amount that they put on there um, as sort of a, a trick, I'm going to say. Um, so the question is, you know, what if you keep a low limit and you pay it off several times throughout the month? Um, so as an example, if you have a $1,500 credit card, um, but you pay it off whenever it hits $800. Um, Kathy, what do you think about that? So I think the $1,500 is your debt utilization number. So you're doing your $800 out of... 1500 so you're almost at a 50 percent debt utilization when you do that just just shy of that um so what that does is the the credit card company only reports once a month so whether you pay it all off or whether you pay off half of it or you pay off every time you make a purchase and you pay that individual purchase off which is what i used to do in my undergrad every time i use my credit card i would immediately transfer the money from my bank to my credit card to make sure that it was always paid off every month um because you know life is different when you're an undergrad versus working full time. <laughs> so uh, that was one of the little tricks I did, but it doesn't change your score in the sense that you're gonna get a better score because they're only reporting once. Uh, the, what does change is your debt utilization. So you're only using 50%, for example, versus 100% and running it up to 1500. So that would actually make your score a little bit better because you're not using the full utilization of what you have access to. So it makes that, remember that was one of the five, the debt utilization number. So that actually makes it look a little bit better. Uh, but uh, as far as multiple reports, they only do it once a month. Um, and if you track your credit and, and actually, I don't know, actually we never talked about this if you do it, but um, I am a little obsessive about spreadsheets. I love spreadsheets, so I track everything. And I, I track my husband and I's um, credit score every month. So all the banks pretty much are set up now where you can say show credit score. And some of them use TransUnion, some of them use Equifax, but uh, whichever one you're using, if you're going up in one, you're probably going up in the other two. It just may not be the exact same number. And I like to see what it is every month so that, um, of course, I'm also very competitive, so <laughs> I like to see who's got the higher one. But uh, you always want to, it does two things. One, it's not just about keeping your credit on track so that you have a good score. It also gives you a huge indication if ever there's an issue like identity theft or something. So say, for example, you're checking your credit score. Remember, it's between 300 and 900. Let's say you're an 800. You've got great credit. 
and you're not watching it. And then all of a sudden next year you look at it or you go to get credit or something and you're like, why is it a 600? You know, nothing's changed in my behavior. I pay my credit cards off, my car payments are on time or whatever the case is. You could be a, that could be an indication of identity theft or fraud. So if you're checking it every month, then you're seeing that, oh, it's an 800, you know, it's a 798, it's an 802. Yeah, okay, that's pretty, pretty normal. Or, you know, if it goes to 790 or 820, like you're not too far away in that range. But when you see it every month, if it's changing a lot every month, then you're like something funky is going on here. But uh, that's one of the one of the things that I we once you figure out what your system's going to be, then you just watch it to make sure that you're not there's no identity theft or something wonky happening. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was that's a good question that we had because that's um that's that's a that's a great thing people to understand what happens when they make their payment, right? So where does it go and how does it really affect them? But yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, and um, one of the things when I first started building credit and I got my first credit card was I was like, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, cautious with that sort of thing. So I was like, do I buy something and I pay it off right away? Um, and, you know, it, I, did, I did my research and, and yeah, it's, you know, they only um, report your credit once a month. Um, but like what people forget, I think is that, um, it will help if you, you know, get it, you know, you only use about 50% as opposed to 95% of your credit limit that will help boost your score a little bit. Um, so there that's, you know, that's a, a good little, uh, sort of habit or a nice little tip to, um, for those people that are trying to build their, their credit score a little bit. Um, I know I'm also a serial credit score checker um, and I'm not competing with anyone except myself just to see if I can get that number to climb up a little bit each month. Uh, I don't know where the satisfaction from that comes from, but um, it's an important thing. So, I mean, it's not a bad thing to be obsessed with it. Um, I mean, nowadays when when you're entering your credit card numbers online for online purchases, um, truly anything can happen. So checking that score is just an extra caution. I know I've encountered um, sort of credit card fraud in the past. Um, and a lot of people I know have, um, you know, nothing super serious, knock on wood. Um, but it, it, it is a good little um, tactic to or habit to get into, um, you know, when you're paying your monthly bills, just to give your credit score a check um, using your bank, it's an easy, it's just the press of a button, your bank will tell you, um, just to make sure you are on track and you can see, you know, things happen, maybe you missed a bill, a bill payment that month or, you know, maybe you did enter your, your numbers on the wrong website and someone got a hold of them. And it's better to find out, you know, now rather than, you know, a few months from now. So, um, you know, that's a good habit to get into. Um, and I do see we have another question in the chat room here. Um, I guess we'll, we'll discuss that too, because it's another good one. Um, what do you do if, if something is out of whack with your credit score like that? Um, yeah. You know, yeah, I, I, I personally, you know, I haven't, again, knock on wood, haven't had anything super dramatic happen to my credit score. But in that case, um, it becomes... Uh, you know, a red flag. Um, as Kathy was saying to me, that would send off the, the warning lights where either A, um, you missed something, um, you missed a bill payment or, um, and I mean, one singular, you know, small bill payment, you miss it by, you know, a couple hours or, or a day or whatever is not gonna, you know, send you into a downward spiral. So if it's a dramatic decrease, you know that there's something um, suspicious going on. Um, and I don't know, Kathy, what do you think about that? Yeah, you're, you're right on. Um, uh, and when you're monitoring it like we do, and I, I secretly knew you would be. <laughs> um, but when you're monitoring your credit every week, every month, like we do, and you do see something out of whack, you are allowed to have one free full credit report a year. And I do recommend everybody do this. 
So you can send in to Equifax or TransUnion and ask for a full credit report. And a full credit report, so what we're doing, the bank shows you your beacon score, that's it. They don't show you whether you paid your credit card on time, your phone bill on time, whatever. But if you ask for a full credit report, then they will send you your full credit report that shows what you go by, like names, al aliases you might have gone by, um, if you've had a bankruptcy, if you any credit cards that you've ever had that are either active or closed or in collections, if any judgments you have pending, um, it will show anything that you have any credit for, like in its entirety. So it'll show you every phone bill you've had, whether it's paid off, it's closed, if it's in um, arrears, uh, if it's like, you know, I'll show you the R3 ratings, that's where you see all that in the full credit report. So as soon as you start to see something go out of whack, I would request a full credit report and have a look at it. And then you'll see, what is this credit card that I got in uh, June when I haven't had a credit card, I haven't had a new credit card in years. And then you start to see where maybe something's gone, where, where it's gone a little bit off the rails. Um, and then you can call them and report that this isn't right. And I'm, I'm either subject to identity theft or um, something got compromised with my card. And you can see, start to see, because it might be a card that's got run up that you haven't used that is your credit card, or it could be a new credit card that you never applied for. Um, then as soon as you see what it is, then you can always start to fix it. Um, and I think you should do it anyway. Even if you don't see something out of whack, you want to make sure your credit looks like it's supposed to look. So you're monitoring it every month. And then once a year, you say, hey, send me my full credit report. I want to see it. And you see, yeah, everything looks looks about right. Um, and I think that keeps you on track and it keeps a good habit too. So if you do have any anything go offside, then you're prepared to say what's happened. And, and I will tell you a funny quick story um, there. My credit card, this was a lot of years ago. I have a shoe fetish. I love shoes and I have way too many shoes. I know that. Um, and it's been an obsession. I get it from my mother. I blame her, <laughs> but uh, I do, I love shoes. And I had this credit card uh, I have one credit card when I was at a school and it's the only one I ever had for the longest time. And it was my MasterCard. And I got a call from the MasterCard company and they said, uh, your card's been canceled because they do too. They also monitor it. So you've got, it's not just you that has to monitor it. The credit card companies do too, because they don't want you to get offside because if you've been compromised and they don't get paid. Right. So we, I got this phone call and they said, um, your card has been compromised and we've canceled it. And I said, what do you mean? It's been compromised. I haven't seen anything weird. And they said, no, we just saw a transaction go through for, it was an insane amount of money. Like it was several thousand dollars. And I'm like, oh yeah, I definitely didn't do that. It was in the States. And they said it was very abnormal activity. And I said, what was it for? And they told me it was a shoe store. And I'm like, that sounds like something I would do. But <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. But I was like, okay, how funny is that? That the my card was compromised by somebody spending too much money on shoes. So I was like, yep, somebody's watching my car. <laughs> but it does happen. So they send, they sent out a new number. They said, we canceled your card and sent you out a new card. So don't use your card anymore. And I'm like, okay, no problem. <laughs> but uh, they see abnormal activity too. Yeah. And that actually happens a little bit more frequently than, I mean, I, I thought it would. Um, Cause I've had that too, where, um, I mean, I'm usually pretty diligent and I make it another habit of checking my um, credit card statement each month just to make sure that everything that's on there is something um, that I did and not anybody else. And the odd time, yeah, you come across something and you're like, what the heck's that? I didn't pay for anything in Nova Scotia. And yeah, uh, yeah just being super diligent. Um, and then it just it's just a matter of sort of immediate action and um, calling the bank, having the card canceled and um, moving forward because um, small things like that, that's the start of um, something bigger. And if you let it carry on, um, then it is going to impact your, your credit score, um, you know, for the worse. Um, but um, it is time for our last break of the show. Um, we will continue the discussion after the break. Um, you're listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspire Choices Network. I'm Ashley Quinn Hogan. I'm here with Kathy Cook Noble. Um, we'll be right back after this break and we'll chat a little bit more about credit history and credit reports. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. 
we're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Brady, welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, before we uh, headed into the break, we were just chatting a little bit about, um, you know, your credit score and what impacts your credit score and um, how to use your credit score as a means of protecting yourself from um, you know, some sinister things such as credit card fraud or um, identity theft and, and things like that. Um, but, you know, I also want to touch on, um, and I know Kathy can speak to this too, some of the, the benefits of a, of a high credit score and, you know, sort of why that's important too. Um, and especially for young people, like people my age, um, that's why I'm, you know, I said I was a serial uh, credit score checker. And, um, you know, I compete with myself every month to make to see if I can get that number up a little bit higher, um, you know, because in, in the long run, it's it's going to make your life a little bit easier when it comes to making big purchases like cars and, and houses and things like that. Um, and, you know, recently, you know, I did, you know, make one of those purchases and I was fortunate enough to, you know, have a, a good credit score where I I didn't have to. Uh, um, scramble to figure out what I was going to do. Um, and, you know, that's the important thing is if you have a, a good credit score, you know, when the time comes that you need it, um, it's a lot easier of a process and a lot less stressful of a process. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so besides bragging, right, on having a high credit score, uh, <laughs> it also, uh, it helps you get lower interest rates. It helps you get approvals faster and better from different lenders. So for example, if you were, um, if you have a good credit score in a car situation, uh, they could approve you right away and say, yeah, this is great versus uh, you're kind of on the edge. We got to see if we can get this through. And they talk to their finance experts and they make a case to say, this is why we think this person should have the, the credit. You know, this one particular, and I, I will tell you, this is what I used to come across, is someone would go through a divorce and uh, it would get, uh, it's, it's not easy to separate necessarily because it's a very high emotion time and it would hurt their credit scores because they took on debt of the partner that they either didn't know they had or it wasn't in their name or they, whatever the case. Um, so the, the, the salespeople would come in, they'd be like, listen, they, their credit score took it is low because they went through this divorce, blah, blah, blah. I think we should, you know, you should consider approving this for credit. So a higher credit score eliminates that needing to make a case for yourself. Um, it also gives you a lower interest rate. So you're paying less on your loan or in the cars cases, you can qualify for the 0% financing on new vehicles when they have them. So your credit score is good. They're like, well, I'm happy to give it to you. We know we're going to get paid. Uh, and it's the same for everything that you go for credit. It doesn't matter if it's a car or, or if it's furniture or if it's a, a line of credit at the bank, they're going to give you a better score, a uh, better rating on your score. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff that makes sense for you. It, in a lot of ways, it makes sense for you to track your credit score and make sure you have a good one. And uh, the other reason you want to keep it good is because you never know when something's going to come up. And I've dealt with this with people where they've been putting off fixing their credit score and then all of a sudden they're gonna buy, their house just came up that they've always wanted to buy and they haven't got their credit score fixed. And either they're paying a higher interest rate or they're not getting approvals. So if it's always kept up like you're doing and like what I'm doing and a lot of us out there and your score is good, then you know it's gonna help you in the long run. So how's that for an answer? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And um, I think, you know, the, 
sort of the main the main point here is know your credit score and don't be diligent in knowing your credit score. Thank you for choosing to listen to Financially Speaking Radio Show. Kathy Cook Noble will return next Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by making the choices that bring you all that you desire.